year, but I think even, uh, it's going to happen even sooner than that, sir. The Honourable Scott Simpson. Mr Speaker, well, we know, we know, Mr Speaker, that the primary school teachers are on strike today. What we didn't know, that the primary school students were from New Zealand First were in the House today. And that show and tell stuff. Look, it was only last week, Mr. Speaker. It was only last week, Mr. Speaker, that the very venerable Audrey Young from the New Zealand Herald had acknowledged her 30 years of contribution to the Herald, and I think most of that served in this press gallery. And I heard her on radio, and she said she was asked what was the highlight of her career to date in terms of the 30 years, and she said. I remember well breaking the story of the time that Winston Peters stood in this house and put up the sign, no, and then she broke the story that proved it to be yes. And so to Derek Ball I say, when a New Zealand first MP stands up in this house and holds up cue cards like that, it doesn't usually end well. It doesn't usually end well. And it won't for Derek Ball and it won't for New Zealand first. Mr Speaker or Madam Speaker, strikes, strikes and more strikes. We heard today, in question time, that there have been some 60,000 New Zealanders take strike action in the short 10 months of this administration. 60,000. And we heard that, that the records show that over the entire nine years of the last national government, only 30,000 people went on strike. And so today we've had the teachers marching here in Parliament and around the country and uh, about, uh, we were told yesterday, about 1,300 primary schools affected with parents who are stressed and having to cope with it. I've noticed some of my colleagues have got the, their children uh, uh, busy around the Parliament here today. But what we know from this government is that they have empowered and emboldened the trade union movement in a way that we haven't seen, well, frankly, since before the 1970s. And they feel like they are owed a debt by this government. Because never forget, never forget the political, the historic and the financial links that exist between the trade union movement and the Labour Party. They are deep, long and strong. And so one of the first pieces of legislation that has been introduced into this House back in January was something that the Labour Party had ready to pull off the shelf that was prepared probably uh, well in advance of, a, of an election at some stage. And when, as soon as they got into the beehive, they pulled this piece of legislation off the shelf and it's designed entirely to give strength, new members, new money uh, to the trade union movement. And so what we are seeing is a contagion of strikes throughout the country, not just in the public sector, but now contagioned into, if that's a word, uh, contaminated into the private sector as well. And what are the chances of there being more? Well, there are going to be lots more strikes. So business confidence is tanking. Uh, my colleague, the Honourable Judith Collins, has just made reference to the fact that only a year or so ago, we were amongst OECD nations, uh, uh, privileged and quite proud of the fact that we had the second highest level of business confidence in the OECD. And now, what is it this year? We have the second lowest level of business confidence. Now, on the other side of the house, they say, oh, this is just junk. This has no bearing at all. Well, I can tell you, uh, uh, can tell the House, Madam Speaker, that in fact, uh, business understands this stuff. Business knows that uh, with the level of economic uh, uncertainty, the level of legislative uncertainty posed by this government, that uh, the economy is sliding. And that's sad. That's sad for New Zealand jobs, that's sad for New Zealand businesses, and that's sad for us as a nation. Because this is a government that doesn't have any visible, coherent or logical plan for economic growth, for a stable economy, for a country that is focused on a direction that is going forward rather than backwards. And what we find at every turn from this government is uncertainty, Uncertainty that creates a lack of confidence in the business sector, but also actually out into the rest of the society as well. So we've seen in this short 10 months, uh, the first thing that the new Labour-led government has done is uh, provide a legislative payback to the unions, uh, and we're seeing that in the piece of legislation that's going through the House now. But that's just the beginning. That's just part of a suite of legislative initiatives that will be bad for business and bad for employers. 
uh, and of course ultimately bad for employees. Uh, there will be no doubt that business levels will drop. So um, 10 months in, chaos, strikes, strikes and more strikes. I call the Honourable Jenny Salisa. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this call on the general debate. And I'd like to first of all congratulate the Minister of Finance, the Honourable.